hey guys so it's time to take few of your question which you have asked and i find them very good and i thought let's share with everyone because everybody will get benefited so this first question is asked by Ira Shri. hey bro currently i am working in telecom sector and i need to switch my career in vlsi so can you please Help me how to start the preparation. I already plan to join a course in Maven Silicon. Is there anything more to do? Uh, yeah, let me know. So this is the same issue or the same condition many of us or you are. I was also like that. Like I was working on IT sector uh, during 2018, uh, 19. And I also thought, hey, let me switch to VLSI because VLSI is our dream company. Uh, things are simple so if you can afford then it's a great idea to join a great VLSI institute again VLSI institute are not like magic that hey you take a give them money uh, one lakhs eight thousand and they will provide you a job no uh, there are a few pre prerequisites actually see in VLSI institute any VLSI institute they have their course ranging from probably minimum average six month length so in six six month length they like as their structures are they will be dealing with many things many lot of things actually and if you don't have your prerequisites what are those uh, your circuit knowledge your basics of btech actually ec on the circuit part then you can't handle uh, or you can't execute everything which they will be executing so in simple word your basic need to be very much cleared before you join any um, VLSI institutes also many of us have never learned anything about Verilog and if you are joining any course in VLSI Institute like RTL design course or like front-end design course or something like that then Verilog is must so my suggestion would be please complete your Verilog again completing Verilog won't take much time one month I have already a video in which in where I have decided like I have explained how in 30 days only you can have some knowledge about Verilog like for interview purposes and if you have that and then you go to pursue your course in any VLSI institute then it will be a great uh, like edge to you because every VLSI institute they say there is 100% placement assistance but it is not true it is never true placement assistance means they won't give you a job but they will help you to get a job but there is no guarantee right and as per my calculation nearly 5 to 10 percent people only get a job from a VLSI institute to a good product based company a product based company maybe three percent less than five percent so that means you need to be in top five percent or ten percent of that batch when you are joining any VLSI institute and to be there same thing your basic need to be clean your basic need to be perfect and in short word if i tell you what is basics then uh, obviously your uh, network like a vl kcl those things need to be there your digital electronics need to be there basics of analog electronics like uh, amplifier how amplifier work basic not much then again very log need to be there and also your semiconductor physics so these five thing and trust me if you have little bit of interest in vlsi or electronics then probably in two months you can revise all these five things and then only after if you join a vlsi institute there is a highly great chance to get into a VLSI or actually getting a great job in VLSI, uh, VLSI industry. So moving to our next question. So this is a very interesting question and it's from our international audience from Bangladesh from Hussein and he is asking a uh, brother how can somebody from Bangladesh participate in NPTEL exam please enlighten me on this. They are asking it is possible and um, but like he is not getting the detail. Uh, I'm I don't have much knowledge but yes from outside India you can register for NPTEL for sure you can learn their courses because it's available in YouTube but to write the exam to get a certificate I think uh, there are few physical exam centers are there outside of India but in Bangladesh I'm not sure but hey uh, remote exams are there there are one of sure you just go there you just go for registration and I think fee is also in Indian rupee it is 4000 or something in India it is 1000 but if you are writing it from outside it would be 4000 Indian currency again I am not sure again the exact amount so go forward and go for regist registering and I am sure they have all the procedure written there and also during COVID time in India also everywhere it was a remote exam also so I don't think there, there are any hurdles to conduct the remote exam in outside India so please go through and see and if anybody of you know already please comment down that 
uh, how the process is if you have taken from outside India. So next question is from Ayush Yadav. Sir, I got IIT Tirupati SPCOM like communication branch. I think in MTech. Yeah, MTech only. I can also have uh, Warangal or Suratkal communication. Currently, I am in MTech EC without specialization in Triple IT Delhi. What to do? Um, I think you should continue your current MTech in EC in Triple IT Delhi. Triple IT Delhi is uh can be considered as top tier but again it can be considered as a host college it's a good college so my suggestion would be continue your ecm tech i'm not sure about ecm tech like without any specialization um i need to search more but i think you have all the opportunity to come into vlsi industry and triple it delhi are in news right now because we have a wonderful and beautiful course from triple it delhi and that is again on vlsi design flow so you have a great professor like uh, him like Shorab uh, Shorab uh, I am forgetting his name uh, this book who is uh, writer of this book uh, Sneh Shorab so if we have a great professor like him uh, please talk to uh, talk with him and I think he will give you some guidance and I know uh, uh, core companies are visiting Triple IT Delhi so don't worry I will be suggesting you please continue your current MTech and, and try to choose elective courses from VLSI domain and then you are good to go this question is from uh, Bhavesh Shai. His question is regarding the choosing the right NPTEL course right now. 31st July is the last day to register for any NPTEL course for this semester. So he's confused between Verilog and RTL to DDS course. That course, a little while I, I was mentioning uh, VLSI Design Flow. So if you are already done with your Verilog, I'll, I'll suggest you go for VLSI Design Flow. That is a really nice course to go for. Next question is from Ajay Chandra. Sir, from where I could learn C programming which I can use in VLSI? For analog and digital, we need to learn only C programming, like question, uh, before starting any software. Now, second part, let me answer second part. For analog and digital, you don't need to learn only C. Okay. And before starting any software, like he is mentioning about EDA tool, if I get it correctly. So for EDA tool, you don't need to have any knowledge of any software, any nothing, no scripting language is required as a beginner. You just need your hardware knowledge of analog circuit and digital circuit. Get it, open an EDA tool, any open source EDA tool, or the if you have the license of commercial EDA tool, and you can good to go. But if after some time like uh, if you want to come to industry where we need to have some scripting language c is a great great uh, language if you learn c you can uh, from c like after getting the confidence from learning a c you can learn any other language very easily but i'll suggest you if you have short of time right now then don't go to learn for c um, better would be start learning python only because it's a very easy and quick to learn so learn python and in industry mostly in scripting language python tcl Perl, these things are we are using so if you can learn python then other would be easy for you to grab if needed so the next question is from shaurav shekhar sir now i am in third year of engineering in sixth semester and i have done internship in vlsi in fifth semester and now i am full minded seated to start as a vlsi engineer so how can i start with and how much time i can give please suggest as you have said, you have already done your internship from uh, like in VLSI. So you have already started your journey toward VLSI. And again, I am saying and there is nothing special about VLSI. Your EC courses are the fundamental of VLSI only. So if you know your circuit part and circuit part means in our uh, BTEC, um, like BTEC syllabus, we have two parts actually. One is circuit part, another is communication part. So in communication part, we learn about many things, algorithms, FFT, uh, digital signal processing. So that part, not necessary if you don't want to go for uh, like company like Qualcomm. And also in a Qualcomm, the specific groups who uh, who uh, work for communication. In Intel also, we have few specific groups who are in communication domain. So if you don't want to go there and if you want to only go for the chip designing, right, then your electronics part or the sorry circuit part is all necessary. And I have already mentioned the five things. So that those things are necessary and you only need two or two and a half months as you are already in third year, you have already completed those things. So you need two or two and a half month, not a year to 
like be ready for the interview so this another question is from user xx for you uh, hi sir it's very big question you can uh, read it in the so in summary he is asking for like he want to go into verification field and in verification we use the framework which are uvm related and honestly speaking i don't have much knowledge about uh, front-end verification like uvm or sb uh, sb means your system very log but i can tell you uh, to get into a job you don't need much of like if you can like if you can test them uh in using cadence or something it's great but if you don't also like you are telling you can't afford and obviously nobody can afford cadence license it's very expensive open software and i'm not sure but again if you only have the system very log knowledge like you can try it from eda playground and also all the nitty-gritty of uvm like how it is working then i think it's good to go so the next question is from uh Koushik and he is asking sir what is the btech class 10 12 mark criteria for vlsi btech is important uh marks because if you are passing for on on campus then for sure btech cgpa have a great role to play because for example you are working uh, you are from college a then in college a everybody is from college a everybody are same everybody learn everything then how they will shortlist initial shortlisting of your cv they will do it from your cgpa only right so vtech cgpa is very important i like there are some importance of class 10 12 but there are a few company uh, which have actually and i don't like those company who have a criteria and i'll tell you if anybody any any company have those criteria that that's just ditch them uh, most of the good company never have any criteria for 10 12 and one question everybody of you have and that is when gonna i gonna release our, our next video on layout uh, on projects of layout i am on it actually i'm a little busy i have some relatives in my uh, house actually so i'm not getting time also it's the end of um, itr feeling like income income tax feeling 31st july is the last so i'm also busy on that it's very complicated and i'm doing it on my own not uh, like i'm not getting any ca help or anything i want to learn those things uh, so that's why uh, uh, by next week for sure i'll be again uploading those project video till then please wait and keep supporting for sure i'll keep on uh, conducting such uh, kind of uh, question answer session in in future and if you want me to take your question then you can comment any question you have and with a hashtag ask why rt and in next episode i'll take your question for sure so tata bye bye and i'll see you in our next video